Last time we spent most of the time talking about um, conceptually how server-side scripting works. So I have my diagram up there, and I, I, we talked about just in general what happens. And that is true for any kind of server-side scripting. It's not true just for ASP.NET. But any sort of server-side scripting that you use, whether it be PHP or Python or um, anything, Ruby, JSP pages, they all work generally the same. And again, I promised this diagram for you a million times, so I have to draw it every class, at least. Client, which again, is someone, typically you think of that as a person sitting in a web browser, but again, it could be a person in a mobile device. It could be Google's crawler looking for uh, web pages to index, all right? through the internet, making requests to a web server, and the server responding with an HTML page, which contains HTML, CSS, JavaScript, plus the other files. All right. Now, we talked about static pages, and static pages, those files are already out there ready, and they just get delivered. With dynamic pages, though, which is going to be our focus, we have scripts. Scripts. And those get processed by the web server. And typically, they are going to also interact with the database at some point. These scripts are written in some other language. And we're going to focus on what we're doing today. So the scripts are, are, are written in ASP.NET and C Sharp. <coughs> Those get translated by the server, processed slash translated slash executed. A couple different words spring to mind. And they get translated into still a web page. Because that's what browsers need. Browsers need web pages. That's what browsers understand. So you can't give browsers an ASP.NET script or C sharp code. The browsers don't know what to do with that. All right? So the browsers never see this code. The browsers see the output of this code. Just like the restaurant analogy I gave last time, the uh, customer never sees the recipe. The customer sees the final plate that's delivered to them. So we're going to focus on what these things are today. And we started to look at it last time when we looked at Visual Studio. In a nutshell, we're going to have for every web page, we're going to have two files. At least two files. All right, when you start adding CSS and images, you might have more. But at least two files. There's going to be the .aspx file in the .aspx.cs file. The ASPX file is going to be a mix of two things. All right? One of the things is plain old HTML. Right? Stuff that, even on a dynamic page, certain things are static. Right? If you go, for example, to eBay, the logo on the top of the page isn't dynamic. It doesn't change for every user or change at the time of day or anything like that. It, it's constant. All right? So even in a static page, uh, I'm sorry, even in the dynamic page, there's going to be parts of it that are static. So that can be written in plain old HTML. So these ASPX pages are going to have some plain old HTML in which you can do anything that we've done in any HTML class. All right, so anything you've done in HTML, you can do in these. That is, you can apply a CSS file, and so on. And it's going to contain ASPX controls. Some synonyms, controls, objects, components. And 
And these are simply pre-developed components, if you will, that will allow you to do your job easier. All right? And we'll study a couple of these different ones. A classic example of these is validation. Now, if any of you have written JavaScript validation, you know that it isn't that difficult to do, but it's a little bit of a task to write validation to go and make sure that a text box is filled, all right? Uh, or that a text box has a date in it, or whatever. There are ASPX components that do that job for you. So these components take tasks that are very common, that are on many different web pages, and make a component to do that for you, so you don't have to develop it from scratch. Now remember, these controls get translated into HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. All right, so the user never sees these controls, the user sees the HTML that they generate. This is what we're going to look at first today. Later on today, or possibly next week, we're going to look at the ASPX CS file, which is C sharp code to access and manipulate these controls. By the way, before I forget, there's a good chance that there will not be classes coming Tuesday. All right, so next week, which would be September 5th. Uh, check Canvas. I, I will post something by the 4th. All right, but there'll be a good chance I won't be here on the 5th. All right, so let's go and let's look at that. And let, let's re reopen Visual Studio and we'll review the process that we went over last time, but this time we'll take a closer look at the ASPX controls that we create and what we can do in this AS, ASPX file. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to start out Visual Studio. By the way, here's a poster I have about PowerPoint in my office. <laughs> For each education campaign, nothing is better than the auto content wizard. Comment, why are we having this meeting? The rate of information transfer is asymptotically approaching zero. Um, there are no bullet lists like Stalin's bullet list, but why read aloud every slide? <laughs> <laughs> And then some, oh, next slide, please, in Russian. <laughs> yeah, really. So, yeah, that's hanging in my wall. That shows my disdain for PowerPoint. <laughs> if you ever not want to have class, like if you're ever like, feeling not, not particularly good on a day and like you just can't absorb any more material, pretend that you don't remember this and ask me what I think about using PowerPoint in the classroom. <laughs> All right, That should take up a good hour or so before I wind down and then it will look like, oh, it's too late to start anything. Have a good weekend. You know? Yeah, excuse me. <laughs> All right. So we're going to go in we're going to re repeat what we did last time, just to be sure. So I'm going to go into File, New, Website. I then want to make sure, make sure that C Sharp is selected. I want to make sure Empty Website is selected, at least to start out. We might look at some of these other options later, but to start out, I'm going to pick Empty Website. Then I want to pick out a place to put it. And usually I put it on the desktop. Um, and if you're going to work in the lab and work at home, that would probably be a good idea because then it's right there, easy to find.
give it a name. Don't give it, simply give it a name of web application one, web app application two, and so on. Give it a meaningful name. So, my meaningful name will be ASP.NET form examples. Right. All right, forms. I click open. It will warn you that you're creating this. Say yes. And go OK. OK. And what that will do is that will create a directory that has a web config file in it. All right. So even your empty website isn't empty. It has the one, or actually two files, uh, config and the debug version of it. Let's spend a second looking at this config file. It's where we put parameters about the system um, in. Later on, we're going to put database connection information in there. All right? Which is nice because if you want to switch databases, you should not have to change your programs at all. If you have code that works on a database, if you want to point to a different database that is structured the same, you shouldn't have to change your code at all. You should just change how you point to the database. So this is a nice place to put sort of those global things that are going to be used throughout your application. Let's find this folder on the desktop. And sure enough, here it is. And it contains a web config and a web config, config debug. If I ever tell you you've sent me the wrong folder, send me the folder that contains web config. All right, that's the right folder. So just go up here, zip it up. Okay. And send the zip file. All right, let's go and create a web page. So I'm going to say new, file, and I'm not going to pick HTML page. I'm going to pick web form. An HTML page is a, a page is a plain old static web page. Well, this is also a plain old static web page, but we have the potential to add dynamic stuff to it. So if I'm, regardless of server-side scripting language I'm using, if I'm creating a server-side scripting application, I will never have plain old HTML pages, even if they are, even if there is a page or two in my application that is static. I'll simply create a web form or a PHP page or whatever. Notice the saying by default is going to give me the default.aspx, and your home page for your application should be called default.aspx. Place code in a separate file. Yes, you want that checked. C sharp, you want that checked. And I'm going to click add. And it's going to add me an empty shell of a web page. If we look closer, though, it actually added two files. The two files that I described a minute ago. One of them being one of them being the ASPX file, and one of them being the .cs file. If we look where these physically get stored, they get stored in the folder where the web config file is. So all your stuff is going to be in this folder or in a subfolder. Of it. If you want images, put them in here or put them in a subfolder. All right, now notice that right off the bat, we have the shell of an HTML page. All right, because remember, all these ASPX files are are HTML pages that have ASP.NET server-side controls we can add on to them. And why do we add on to them? We add on to them um, because those controls make some of our common tasks easier. Yeah. All right, so that's why we do this. Now, that being said, we can do anything here that we could do in a regular HTML page. So, for example, I'm going to go and I'm going to add a CSS file to this. Now, I don't spend a lot of time, um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time, like, making the pages look pretty, right? Because the code is really what we're, what we're stressing in this class. But when you do your assignments, 
you should make your pages look like a completed web page. All right, so you should go through. This is a good opportunity for you to practice your HTML, CSS skills and go in and um, spend some time to make them look professional. Um, I'll give a nod to that by at least putting some sort of CSS probably in most, if not all, of my pages. So how would I put CSS? Well, how would I put CSS? This is just a regular web page. Same thing. I'd go and create a CSS file. File, new file. CSS. It would be if I saw it. Oh, okay. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. I was looking for the C. I was looking for cascading style sheet. Ah, uh, yes. All right. So I'll pick ca uh, cascading style sheet, and I get an empty CSS file. And I can do anything I want to in it. So just for fun, I'm going to do something like this. I'm going to say body background. Pound. Even gives you a color picker. Gee. Wasn't like this when I was coding web pages back in the old days. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, indeed. Even such a Nice codes. And let's give a text color of something else. Weird, doesn't didn't do it the same way. Bisk. 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 Yeah. Oh, there we go. Because I did an at sign. <coughs> I have no idea what color bisk is. Bisk. Let's go with that. We'll see how that works. All right. And then just for laughs, I'm going to go and I'm going to say divs have a border. One pixel black solid. All right, so I'm going, to, I'm going to debug this. So I'm going to hit debug and run it. Oh, and it's not going to work. Okay. Why is it not going to work? Because you didn't link it to the HTML page. So I didn't link it to the HTML page, right, or the ASPX page. So I'm going to go and say link. Link. Type equals text slash CSS, um, rel equals style sheet, href equals style sheet dot CSS. Aren't you glad that I had you use just plain text editors in HTML class? Now you appreciate this, all right? <coughs> Okay, so now it should work. And if we run it, debug it. When I debug, let's, let's analyze what's happening. All right? This is a little confusing because when I run debug, this machine becomes both the client and the server. So when I click debug, it starts up a little mini development web server. All right, that's sort of what the pause is now. Um, actually, no, that's not what the pause is now. It finished it. I just don't have anything on the page other than an empty div. So it gave me a border around nothing. That's why it's just a big black line. All right. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to go and fix that in, in a second. Uh, but it started up a web server. The web server processed my ASPX page and delivered it to the browser. So this machine is both the client and the server in this transaction. So let me go and put something in here. <coughs> and I'll 
put some more stuff here. All right. So I started on that. It's firing up the development server. Okay. And it brings up my page. And notice how my page is um, the stuff that I put in. And it has the style sheet applied. Now, keep in mind that I can do anything here that I would do to a regular, uh, just plain old HTML page. So, for example, if I wanted uh, the E in example not to be right up to the edge, what CSS attribute would I use? The margin, possibly, or padding would work as well. Right. Likewise with the P, if I didn't want it to line up right there, I could put a padding on it. So let's go and do that so that we can at least somewhat do a nice layout here. So I can say H1, padding, ten pixels, and the same thing for paragraph. All right. Now, let's look at this from the, from the client's perspective. This code that we're looking at here is from the server's perspective. That's what is on the server side. If I look at the client side, what am I going to see? I'm going to see plain old HTML. So I'm not going to see this declaration at the beginning of the page. Oops. View source. Shows me plain old HTML that got developed. Uh. All right. So that's just stuff that you knew coming into this class, or you should have known coming into this class, just basic HTML stuff. All right. Now we're going to start putting some uh, ASP.NET controls on the page. So the first control I put on the page is I'm going to put a calendar control. Calendars are fairly common on web pages, right? You don't necessarily see one on every web page, but there's a lot of web pages that have calendars on them, any sort of event um, thing or schedule or whatever. So I'm going to put a calendar on it. Remember what these, the purpose of these components are. The purpose of these components are to take common functions, functions that are going to be done on a bunch of different web pages, and create a component for them so that you don't have to write one of these from scratch. All right, let's imagine you are going to write a calendar. And let's just say we're going to do it in plain HTML. Let's not even talk about a dynamic calendar, which is, a, which is even harder still. What would be the HTML to create a calendar? What tags would you use if, if you had to create a calendar for August in HTML? Use a table tag. How many columns would the table tag have? Seven. Seven. How many rows would it have? Five. Yeah. Depending on the month, maybe four, maybe five. Are there any or months five. that have? <coughs> are there any months that have six weeks in it? A month that would start on a start on a Sunday? I'll bet there is. So it might have four, five, or six. All right. And then there'd be styling involved and so on. All right. So again, not earth shattering, but if you had to code it from scratch. It would take a little bit of time to create it. Now, if you add on that, to also have to make it dynamic so that you can scroll through the months, for example, then it becomes more difficult still. Fortunately for us, there is an ASP.NET control. How do you add the ASP.NET controls? You get the toolbox menu appearing here. If it happens not to be appearing, you can go to View and add the toolbox. I usually pin the toolbox down so it's always there, but you can make it so that it gets unpinned <coughs> so it automatically hides. There's several categories of stuff in here. Uh, there are 
standard ASP.NET controls, there are ASP.NET controls that deal with data. All right, so for example, database interactivity. There are controls that deal with validation. There's controls that deal with navigation, and so on down the line. This is a standard, and I'm going to take it, I'm going to drag that onto the page where I want it to be. Now notice what I have. I have something that looks like an HTML tag. All right. That has the format of an HTML tag. That is, it has the lesson sign, has a bunch of stuff, has a tag name, it has attributes, it has an ending tag. The difference, of course, is that the tag, or the fake tag, because um, this isn't really an HTML tag, starts with ASP colon. So that's a sign that this isn't a plain old HTML tag. This is an ASP.NET control. So what happens when the server encounters this? The server will translate this ASP.NET control into something the browser can consume. And what can the browser consume? The browser can consume HTML, JavaScript, CSS. So this HTML control gets translated. This one ASP.NET control gets translated into a whole bunch of HTML. It's not a one-to-one -one translation. It's not like one of these things translates to one HTML. It's possible that one ASP.NET control can translate to a whole bunch of HTML. So let's run this and see what we get. Right. Let's see. And there we go. We get a calendar. Now, if I view source on this, I can see all the HTML that, got it, that it got translated to. It got translated into some JavaScript, which we'll see the purpose of that in a minute. It got translated into a table. with TRs, TDs, and so on. So one ASP.NET control got translated into a whole bunch of HTML, plus some JavaScript. All right? And I can go and navigate through this. I can use this to go forward a month. I can use this to go back a month. So, that's how, in a nutshell, ASP.NET controls work. They get translated into HTML, maybe CSS, and maybe JavaScript, depending on a particular control. And in this case, this one ASP.NET control, on the server, it looks like this. On the client, it looked like what we looked at a minute ago. A table and a bunch of other stuff. What do you suppose the advantage? Because I could write a calendar of my own. I could write something exactly like this on my own if I wanted to. All right? What are the advantages of using an ASP.NET con calendar control instead of me writing a calendar of my own. Yes? It saves time. Saves time, right? How long did it take me to put that on there? You know, two seconds, right? And I have that. How long would it take me to write a calendar control? Oh, well, I don't know. I've been programming for a, for a long time, so it wouldn't take me forever, but to write something like this, um, four hours maybe? I don't know. Maybe less, maybe more. I'm not really good at estimating. But it What's another advantage of using a control like this? Yes. It should already be fairly rigorously tested. All right? In other words, it might take me, let's say, three hours to write my calendar control, but then how long would it take me for, to test it? 
And how long would it take me to test all the unusual circumstances, like leap years, all right, and stuff like that? It might take me another few hours to do that, or maybe even longer. And even then, it probably wouldn't be as thoroughly tested as this control is, all right? Anything else? Any other reason for doing, using this control rather than writing your own calendar control? Yes? Readability in your code. Readability in your code? Absolutely. All right, that's pretty well, very straightforward how that works. All right? I can look up everything I need to know about calendar controls, and there's good documentation on it. Uh, the code is real clean because all it says is ASP calendar. What is another advantage of using this? There's one more advantage. Think about a very large project where maybe more than one person is developing code. Project gets done quicker? Well, yeah. Everyone gets the benefit of this, so the project gets done quicker. Cleaner code. Cleaner code. And that's true. And then I heard another piece of the answer over here. It's going to be consistent. So, for example, if there were two or three people that worked on pages that had calendars, like let's say Elsie's website, we might have an academic calendar that shows like when the semester starts, when the semester ends, when break is, what days we have off, and so on. What days are the drop days, you know, and so on. We might have an events calendar that shows, like, what sporting events are going on and what films the film society is playing and all that. So there might be a couple pages that uses a calendar. If we all use the same framework, our code is going to be a lot more consistent than if we each developed our own solution to it. And that's a big win, all right, to have one problem dealt with in a consistent way. It's good from the developer's perspective because... Hey, if I'm a new guy that comes in and I have to do maintenance on those calendar pages, guess what? Those calendar pages are written the same way. It's also advantageous for the user because the user is going to get sort of a guarantee that the interface is going to be consistent if we use the same components. All right, those are fairly straight. That's a fairly straightforward question what the benefit of that is. All right, first and foremost, the speed in developing. But the fact that it's tested, the fact that it's consistent, all those other things are benefits as well. What is a dis this is a harder question to answer. All right? What is a disadvantage of using this? Yes? Lack of customization. Lack of customization? Uh, I'm going to rephrase that a little bit. Uh, if I do it myself, I can get it to work exactly the way that I want it to work. All right? If I use a pre-written component, there could be some limitations built on the component where I might not be able to do exactly what I want to do. There's a lot of ways that you can customize this control. All right? So I don't want to say lack of customization because you can customize this. I just picked the default appearance for it. But there's ways that you can go in and customize it. Like if you don't want the, the week to start on Sunday, if you want the week to start on Monday, all right, you can do that. And there's other things that you can do as well. But those are finite, right? If I write the code myself, I have complete control and I can get it to work exactly the way I want. If I use a component, there might be some limitations where it is difficult or I don't want to say impossible, but it's very difficult or impractical to get it to work the way that you want it to do. Now, at a certain point, you know, you always have to contrast the advantages and disadvantages, you know. Um, maybe the advantages of being consistent and tested and quicker to develop outweigh the fact that I could customize this little thing of it. Maybe that little customization really isn't that important. All right? But it is a disadvantage. Now, the nice thing about ASP.NET is you can always write your own code if you don't like the code that's generated. Are you going to do that? Well, maybe sometimes you will. 
Maybe sometimes you won't. Certainly you first would look to the component and make sure it, it see if it does the job for you. If it does the job for you or does it close enough, then you'll use it. But you always have the option to write your own code from scratch and come up with that. All right, let's look a little closer at this component and how we can customize it. Because every component has some properties. So I can pick this component, and I can pick it just by clicking on it. But there's a whole bunch of properties I can set. Let me see. I can set, for example... first day of week. I can pick the default based on the operating system. Or I could say the first day of the week is Monday. First day of the week is Thursday. I don't know. I do know in some cultures Saturday is, believe, is the first day of the week, I think. And some Sunday is considered I could even, when we start getting into C-sharp, allow the user to customize it. What day of the week do you want to be the starting day of the week? All right, and, and do that. But we'll just change it for now for Monday. Because for me, Monday, I, I always think of this first day of the week. Right. So, so if I go and run this, it'll look the same, and except that Monday's the first day of the week. Here's something that's interesting, too. And this gives you choices, and all I'm going to say about it is I'm going to say the way that I prefer to do it, and uh, then you can sort of come up with what you, how you want to handle it. You can put associated with this calendar <coughs> certain style aspects, like. foreground color, the height, the width, and so on. You can associate with this a CSS class also. So certain things of the visual appearance you could control via the control itself, or via CSS. What do you suspect by preferences? To control it via the control itself or to control it via CSS? CSS. Through CSS. Why do you think I prefer to control over CSS? You can see it better when you're editing? Um, possibly. I guess consistency would be the reason why. If I, do, if I make my calendars look the way that I want them to do using CSS, all right, then I can create a CSS style for calendars, and I can apply that on every web page throughout my system. So all my calendars will look the same. If I go in and set for an individual control how I want the calendar to look, then if I want a calendar on another page to look like, I have to copy all those. If I want to change it, I have to change it in two places. So I'll put uh, a CSS class of calendar on here. Then I'll go on my style sheet and is a dotted red border, but they're tiny dots. Indeed, they are That's very small. Indeed, very small. 
Okay. Let's make the bigger dots so that we can see them. Alright. I see them. Yeah, you see them. They're not necessarily what I want, but you get the idea. Right. On occasion, what you put in for style on the um, control will interfere with the style um, in CSS. So this is this can be a challenge. The reason they did it this way, I think, is a lot of people do ASP.NET development that really don't know a lot about HTML and CSS. All right, so they made it work like a desktop. Um, C sharp application where you can go and set the visual properties of the controls um, that way. All right. Let's see what I want to show. You can view any ASPX page three different ways. The one way that I started out with today, in is through the source code view, where it's just like a text editor with IntelliSense and you type in the code. You can also view it in design mode which is a graphical way of looking at it. You can also view it in a split mode where it shows you the graphical on the bottom and the code on the top. Now keep in mind that this is a very 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 small display size to be projected up on the screen so um, Split doesn't really look good here because you only see tiny bits of both. But if you had a really big monitor, uh, split might be more, more beneficial for you. I will alternate between source and design because both of them can be useful. All right. <clears throat> the design is a nice little GUI where you can drag and drop stuff, and that's kind of cool. That is pretty cool. All right. However, sometimes you just want to get into the code and write it. I mean, when you drag and drop, sometimes you're helpless about like where you place it and things like that. Yeah, stuff like that. Can we keep it down, please? Oh, sorry. All right. So therefore, um, therefore, it's, it's advantageous if you know how to use both ways. Because there's some things that I like to do that I do in graphical mode. There's some things I like to do in code mode. Yes? If you drag and drop things, does it, can you go into the code and manipulate Oh, absolutely. So, for example, let's say I put a second calendar here. So I go into graphical mode, and I go and put a second calendar here. All right. It put it right underneath it. I could go here and now I could do whatever I wanted to to it. I could move it in its own div for example. in its own div, so it will have its own border around it. So yeah, absolutely, you can mix and match. There are just two ways of working on it. You figure out the way that works best for you. Yes? I'm curious about something. Uh -huh. When you go on a site like eBay, let's say like how you search a tuxedo, and you want to go back to the home page, mm -hmm. you just click on the image, mm -hmm. and just bring it to the home page. Mm -hmm. How would you do that? How would I make a, an image as a link? Okay, that's really just an HTML issue, right? Let's go in and get, let's, let's link to LC's page because we don't have a home page here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, but we download LC's logo. And this is a good question because this will talk about how to create images. So I'll save a picture as LCC logo PNG. I'll bring that into... I don't know where it saved it. Oh, 
HIV downloads? Probably. Yeah. Nope. Well, let's pay more attention this time. Allegedly, the desktop. Okay. I'll bring it in here. So I'll bring it as part of my applications folder. And then I can go in and just make it a link. because I moved it in before I opened this up so I can see that file and now I can go in and um, I can browse for it. I can just type in a name. So that would be a link then. So you can, you, normally we've been putting text between the starting and ending A tag, um, but you can put an image, you certainly put an image there. Now, this is just, that, that's a good question, and, and I want to bring up a point now, and we won't completely do it now, but I, I want to briefly, briefly talk about it. There is... an ASP.NET control for link somewhere. There's a link button and then there's a hyperlink. All right. And I can set an image URL for it, and I can set the navigate URL to so there's an ASP.NET control that I could use to create a link. Or I can make an HTML link the old fashioned way. Let's see what happens with the differences when I run it. No difference in appearance. I click on that, I go to Lorraine CCC. I click on that, I go to Lorraine CCC. Let's look at the code that got generated. Here's the code I created. Here's the code they created. Just about the same thing. Why would I do one versus the other? What difference does it make if I use, if I created the HTML link? My goal is to deliver one of my lectures over there. 
<laughs> Turn to page 75. <laughs> All right. What's the difference between using the ASP.NET control to make a link or just coding in a link in an HTML? Yes? Does it have to do with like, where the image is saved? Is Not really. It? Okay. No, either way, no matter where the image is saved, you could get it to work either way. Yes? Could it be for consistency? Could be for consistency. Maybe you pick a style of doing it and you do it that way all the time. Maybe. The answer is, it really doesn't matter. But, here's my suggestion, here's how I would do it. If it's just a static, plain old link that never changes, you might as well make it an HTML link. All right? It would save a microsecond on the server processing it, because the server doesn't have to process HTML to HTML. It's already HTML, so it doesn't have to translate it. If, however, it was a dynamic link, and we'll be an example of a dynamic link. Well, let's say we have, a, we have a, a faculty page here at LC, all right? And one of the things that you could put, a faculty person could put, is they could put a URL in. Maybe that has their, their biography or their resume or whatever. That would be a case of a dynamic link, right? It's going to be different for every faculty member. If it was a dynamic link, and if I was going to program it to have dynamic behavior, then I would use the ASP.NET control. Because later on I can come in and use C Sharp to dynamically set that. All right? Now we haven't talked about using C Sharp and all that, but if it's a plain old static link, you might as well do it as an HTML tag. If it's something that you want to possibly change, then I would I might do it as an ASP.NET. I'm not going to like scrutinize and examine and deduct it either way, though, because either way would work. Questions? All right, I'm going to leave this, and I'm going to create a second page, one that has a form. All right? And what I'm going to do is do one of my favorite things to do. Well, this is going to make me sound pretty sad if I say this is one of my favorite things to do. This is one of my favorite things to do as an early example in programming classes. That rephrase. <laughs> this isn't like what I'm going to be doing over the four-day Labor Day weekend, all right, just to clarify. Um, what I might do over the four-day weekend probably won't be that much more exciting than this, but it will be a little better than this, all right? I'm going to do Fahrenheit to, to centigrade conversion, all right? That's something that's dynamic, right? Because what I specify the output as depends on what the input was, right? So if I put in one temperature, it's going to give me a different answer. If I put another temperature, it's going to give me another answer, all right? So um, I'm going to go and I'm going to put, uh, uh, create a, a centigrade to Fahrenheit conversion. Now, Let's think a second about how I want the page to look. I'm going to sketch the page on the board. It's not going to be earth shattering, all right? But uh, I want to plan how that page is going to be, and then I'm going to think about how I'm going to, I'm going to think about where the stuff is going to go.
has the answer. So if I typed in 32 in here, I'm going to get a zero here. All right? Now, what else might I want to add to this page? A clear button. Probably not. I hate clear buttons. <laughs> All right? I hate clear buttons because more, uh, oftentimes, or more, just as often as someone hits them on purpose, they accidentally hit them and they, they destroy a page worth of data. All right, so I, no, I'm not going to put a clear button. No. What, what else might I put on this page? Not necessarily visual. Well, what is this called? It's called a text box, right? What can you put in text box? Text. So what might I want to put? Validation. validation of some kind. Might want to put a couple kind of validations. I might want to say that the value, I must enter a value. I might want to put in a validation and say it must be a number. Can you say it must be in Fahrenheit? Pardon me? Can you say it must be in Fahrenheit? I could specify a range of valid te Fahrenheit temperatures. All right? Because how do I know what if it's valid or not? In other words, 10,000. Is that a valid temperature for Fahrenheit? Yeah, it could be. Like maybe the sun is 10,000. It's probably hotter than that. But you, you know what I'm saying? But there is a number that isn't valid. Like what's absolute zero? Like negative 473? I, or four, yeah, something like that. I couldn't put in negative 500 then. So maybe I could put a validation of the range for valid. But other than that, that's just a number. So I could probably put anything I wanted to in other than that range. But that's a good point. I could put in whatever I wanted my allowable range to be. Like if I was calculating like temperatures on Earth, maybe it would go from negative 100 to 120 or something like that as a valid range. Okay, we're going to build this, and I don't know if we'll get through all this today, but we'll finish it up next time. I do want to finish the calculation part, even if I don't do the validation yet. All right? Now, <clears throat> What are we going to have? What are, what are these things going to be? And I think it's useful whenever you have a, a programming task, task to take inventory and what you know and what you don't know. All right? This could just be an H1 tag. All right? This could just be a label. All right? Could be just an HTML label. Doesn't need to be a C, uh, 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 an ASP.NET label. Why do I say that? Because that's never changing. That's always going to simply say uh, enter temperature. This is going to be an ASP.NET text box. Why? Because this is part of the dynamic recipe, right? This is going to be included in the calculation for that. This is going to be an ASP.NET button. All right. This is going to be not an HTML label, but an ASP.NET label. Why an ASP.NET label? Because I want to change the value of it. Right. Right? Change it. The number that I put in there determines the number I put in here. All right. Enter temperature is always going to say enter temperature. Right? It's not going to, have to say something else. It's always going to say under temperature. So this could be an HTML tag because this is static. This could be an HTML label because it's static. 32 is part of the dynamic recipe, right? I'm going to need the value of that text box to do my thing with it. So it needs to be in an ASP.NET control. This is going to trigger. It needs to be an ASP.NET button. And this is going to be dynamic as well, so it needs to be an ASP.NET control. You actually could, through, how do I want to phrase this? We'll leave it like that for now. Right. right. Um, that's the approach I'm going to take. This stuff 
gee, I don't know, we haven't talked about this yet, but I imagine it's going to be an ASP.NET control, right? Because it's sort of dynamic. Now here's a question. Where is the place that I'm going to put the actual math? To convert Fahrenheit to centigrade is... Okay. One, one second. What is the actual formula? Centigrade equals Fahrenheit minus 32 times 5 nights. I think so. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's right. We'll find out. Now, won't we? Yes, we will. Right? So... Let's, let's go with that, and we'll figure it out later. Where's this code going to live? You had mentioned... In the calculator button? It's going to be triggered by the calculator button. That's true. But where am I actually going to type this code in? Do I type it into the button? It's in the CS file. It's in the CS file. CS. So my, this is code that's going to manipulate the controls on the page. It's going to grab Fahrenheit from the text box. It's going to calculate the result and put the result in that label. All right. So I'm going to use values from the ASP.NET control. I'm going to change values in the ASP.NET control. All right. So let's go and make this. There's one part of this that I'm going to pretend <clears throat> that I don't remember, and we'll see if any of you know how to do it. All right, so let's close out of here. Let's go up and make a new file, new web form. I'm going to call it convert. Okay. Place code in a separate file. And I'm going to put my text box on here. I'm going to put my button on here. I'm going to put my label on here. And I'm going to put my H1 on here. That's why I didn't use Celsius. I don't remember how you spell it. part of my page. So I'm going to run it. And it's not going to work yet, but it should be the visual part of my page. An H1, a label, it's a plain HTML because it's not dynamic at all, a text box where I put the number in, a button that's going to go and do the submit, and finally a label to put the answer in. So I run this. Right. All right, there's the H1, there's a label, there's a text box, there's a button. 
all right? Nothing happened, all right? Why not? Because I didn't write any code. All I did is I set up the visual structure for this to work, all right? The, the, the user interface. And if I look at the source for this, the translation from those ASP.NET controls to HTML is not quite as dramatic as it is for the calendar, but it took those ASP.NET controls and it doesn't want to show me the source, but it went and translated them to HTML. So now we have to put the code in, and this is something we haven't done yet. All right. How do I get to that CS file? Well, I could double click on it and get into it. But I want to create a certain method. I want that button to trigger the calculation. So if you want an event associated with a particular control, the easiest thing to do is to double click on the button in the UI. So I'm going to go and double click on this. It takes me into the ASPX.CS file and it takes me right to the button click event. So this is code that is wired to the button. All right. write a little bit of code here. I'm going to hope I remember what language I'm in. How do I refer to the value of the text box? Well, this is sort of how you do it, but obviously something's wrong because it's giving me a little squiggly. Oops. minus 32 times 5 divided by 9. Where did I get text box 1? If I look at the source code for this, that is the ID of the text box. Text box 1. Now, if I look at the red squiggly, it tells me I can't do a subtract with a um, with a uh, with a uh, uh, with a string. Because remember, what can be in a text box? Anything. So I have to convert it to a number. All right. Um, how do I convert a string to a number? Oh, I could do it a bunch of different ways. Let's see. This is the part I don't remember. C sharp, C sharp, convert string to double. Convert to double is one way to do it. There's probably a couple different ways to do it. So let's do that. So, I 
take what's in that text box, I make it into a number. I treat it like a number. I subtract 32, I multiply by 5 nines. That should be my answer. Now, what do I want to do with the answer? I want to put it in that label. So I will say label 1. That's the ID of my label. That text equals, can I say answer? Not really. No. Why not? Because same reason, only in reverse. That's a number. I have to convert it to a string. Fortunately, there is a method for that. So, this should work. All right. Let's review what's going to happen. When I click the button, this code is going to uh, fire up. How do I know that? Well, because I went to the button and double-clicked it. And that takes me to the section of the CS file for that button click event. I also can tell by looking at the source, and it says, on click, button one click. All right? So this is the code that's going to happen when I click the button. What am I doing? I'm creating a variable, and I'm setting it to zero. I am doing a calculation. I first convert the value of the text box to a double, right? I have to do that because the text box can contain literally any text, all right? And therefore, I convert it to a double. I then apply my formula. I'm, I, I subtract 32 from it. I multiply it by 5 ninths. And I get my answer. That's stored in the variable of type double. I then need to display that answer. So what I want to do is I want to go and put that answer in this label. And I do that by saying answer to string. So I take, what's, I take the number in there, convert it to a string, and stuff it in the text. Notice a couple of things about this. Notice it says textbox1.text. A text box is a component. It's an object, which means that it has a bunch of characteristics about it. All right? It's not a simple variable. It's a complicated variable. It has a lot of attributes associated with it. Therefore, we have to specify what attribute do, we, do I mean. Do I want the size of the text box and multiply that by or subtract 32 from that? No. Do I want the color of the text box and subtract 32? No. I want the value of the text box. And the value of the text box is in an attribute called text. So that's why I say textbox1.text. All right? Likewise, when I stuff the label. Do I want to change the size of the label, the color of the label? No. I want to change the value in the label. So I say label one dot text. Let me run this and make sure that it works. Right. Okay. So Fahrenheit to centigrade, 32 degrees. Boom. Told me zero. That's right. 212. Boom. Tells me 100. That's right. Another one to remember is negative 40. Because negative 40 Fahrenheit is negative 40 centigrade. Boom. That one's right as well. So, did I do enough test cases? I don't know, but I think I did. I am pretty confident that this corrects because it's a simple enough calculation. Now, what happens if I put garbage in here? <laughs> it's going to blow up. It's going to blow up big time. Man. And it did. And so it did. Which is obviously not good. Never is. And the reason for that is because of the text box, I can literally put anything into it. I want to test to make sure it's a number, so I have to validate. All right, and that's where we'll pick up next time. All right, I'm going to post this example to Canvas. Um, if I am not here on Tuesday, I will have an activity for you to do. All right, so check Canvas. Uh, by the end of day Monday, I will have posted what the situation is and if I have an activity. 
All right. I will go on unlo un unlock the lab for you. Then I will come back here and get grab the files that I need, and then I'll be back in lab. So we'll see you there. Call. Cool. Yeah, I never remember how to convert. So 